Hello there. Well, it's uh, well, I'm at uh, Edale Station, Edale in the Peak District, and uh, it's 11:05 p.m. Um, and um, well, I'm just about to set off on a bit of a night hike uh, up towards um, well. Basically, Kinder Scout, Bleak Clow, possibly Black Hill. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is because I want to do a long distance hill walk, but the problem with the Peak District is it's not very exciting. There isn't that much to to actually happen. The Pennine Way is pretty much the only path that goes anywhere. All the other ones are just kind of like. Yep, we've put a path here because we're going to go down to like the town. Uh, so yeah, plan walk along the Penan Way and uh, hopefully have some fun. See you in a bit. So um, I'm walking through Edale. Um, the reason I'm using red light is so as not to wreck my night vision. It's actually quite light here. I mean, the camera is going to fail to show it to you, really. But there's an incredibly bright moon behind me. And although it just looks like a white moon in a dark s sky, um, I can actually see the outlines of all the hills over here. Um, I have to say that kind of waking up lambs as you walk through their fields is pretty awesome. Well, not the waking up bit, but the Lambs are so cute uh, when they're sleepy. Um, but it's really bright here. Um, I mean, there's really no need for the head torch, um, except to make this video. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I've only really walked about half a mile. You know, let's update every half and half, half a mile. But, uh, well, the first half a mile's been good. Let's see how the rest of the whole thing is. Uh, but yeah, it's quite bright, so it should be fun. Right. It's uh, very interesting what um, the camera can't see. I mean, all you can see right now is my illuminated face by a head torch. But, well, before I blinded myself with the head torch, I could see the misty of the video below me. Silhouette of Edale Rocks over there. I wonder whether my torch can highlight this for you. Uh, let me just try not to kill myself. There's a torch on the uh, No. That would be a no. Yeah. Well, the torch can't highlight anything interesting for you. But um, I'm at the top of Jacob's Ladder. I've got Edale rocks behind me and I'm looking down into Edale now. Um, I can see quite a long way, I mean, it's very clear. Um, the moon's out and I can see the lights of well, cities on both sides of the uh, Pennines. Well, yeah, Pennines. So I can see things towards the Camp Hope side and things towards, I guess, Bucks and Macclesfield. Um, and I'm going to imagine that once I drop onto uh, the Kinder side, I'll be able to see all down into Manchester, which will be quite exciting. But I mean, the weather here is, considering it's night, the weather's pretty much all I could hope for. It's a bit chilly, but um, beautifully clear. And yeah, full moon. Uh, so, should be kind of quite an easy easy walk along towards um, Kinder Downfall and Kinder Low. I've just left, left the summit of Kinder Low and um, come over the, uh, well I can no longer see Edale. What I can see below me is a, uh, well, this is again where you're going to have to imagine mainly. I can see a you can see some kind of glimmers and whatnot. I can see a shimmering expanse of orange lights that is Manchester. I mean, let's see if we can 
zoom in at all. And these are just, you're, you're, you're just seeing kind of some of the brightest. I can see literally a, a big kind of vista of shimmering. And it is shimmering, it's kind of like everything's flashing on and off. And it's kind of shimmering orange. And it's uh, very pretty, really. Um, and yeah, so I'm just going to walk along the kind of Kinder Ridge, obviously. Uh, ridge, Plateau, Edge, whatever it's called. Um, but yeah, it's, and I can see, you probably can't see either, but um, yeah, there we go. Flashing lights of Home Moss. Uh, the uh, big uh, broadcast tower near Home Firth. Um, but yeah, it's good. What's the time? Good time check. Time is quarter past one. Um, so, yeah, um, it's good, it's a bit chilly, um, the wind's kind of, I mean this is good in some way, it's a little bit of frost on the ground and so some of the mud, um, that there is, isn't quite so, uh, harsh because you can just walk over the, the mud on the side of it. Um, what else? Oh, I, I forgot to mention though, I, I I've seen an awful lot of wildlife um, so far. I mean, in Edale, I think I saw a fox um, running away from me, probably preying on some sheep. Uh, near the top of um, near the top of the what's it called? <laughs> um, near the top of Jacob's ladder, I saw a hare, and also put up some grouse. So. Hopefully I will see some more. Um, I think that's it really. I, might st I was just thinking this is probably the the first time I've done this walk since um, about April 2010. Um, when I, at Easter I walked with a friend from Gossip um, over down to Edale. And um, that time, well I've not done it since. Um, and that time there was lots of snow, um, which we hadn't been expecting at all. Um, and I seem to remember the compass navigating at least once, but it's incredible how much I remember, I think. Um, I've got the compass in my pocket, but the visibility, I mean, with a, I mean, yeah, with a full moon and, um, just kind of navigating visually, which is probably not the most, you know, something I'll learn from, but it's dead easy. Anyway, I'm going to go because standing still is cold. Bye! Um, I've made it to Kinder Downfall. There's not really that much more to say, really. Uh, yeah. Kinder Downfall. You can't see it. I can't see it. It's all good. Bye! I've just made it to Mill Hill. Uh, all pretty good. A bit tired. Onwards, I guess. Uh, shut up, you fucking bird. <laughs> well, I've just um, made it to the Snake Pass. It's about 3.40. I left Mill Hill and looked. that section. Um, I think I'm going to take a short break, a bit of skip break, um, and then head on up to Bleaklow Head, which I reckon I should be able to do before five, um, and then work out what to do next. Um, yeah, we'll see when we get there. It's pretty you can't see uh, see this view because there's a, a lake at the top of the snake pass and it's, uh, you can see well 
you can see the beautiful light pollution reflected um, off the sky into it. And, uh, well, I mean, you know, light pollution's bad and everything, but the way... But if you can look at kind of a city in a kind of Blade Runner style beauty, um, there's quite a lot going for kind of being able to see twinkling lights of the city below. Um, it's a full moon anyway, so I wasn't going to see any stars. Uh, he says, looking up and seeing stars, but it made sense in my head. Anyway, onwards to uh, break time and then bleak the head. Woo. Bye. Hello. Look, you can see me without the light. Kind of. Um, I'm on the way to uh, Bleaklow Head, but um, look what we can see. In the northeast, we see the start of dawn. All you can see is the clouds, really, um, and the sky. But uh, it's good. Look, it's exciting. Right, anyway, I'm going to go onwards. Bye. It's five past five. And uh, as you can see, it's quite light. And uh, here we are getting arriving at Bleaklow Head. Or as I like to call it, one of the highest lumps of mud in the surrounding area. Because that's what it is. not exactly a spiky summit we're on. Well, I'm not climbing to the top of the pole, put it that way. Um, so yeah, Kinder and Bleaklo. Let's go to the top, shall we? Back the way I've come, and there's um, well, you might not be able to see it properly the lights of uh, Manchester and Glossop and Mosley and Oldham. And back to home, boss. Yeah, so, got here, um, not quite sure what I'm going to do next, quite tired, but I don't quite want to rule out Black Hill, which must be one of the lumps we can see over here. On the other hand, Black Hill is reputed to be one of the more dull hills, so I'm tempted just to walk down um, via uh, Barbell Cliff um, and Cock Hill to Glossop and sleep at Parents Base. So maybe I'll do that. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, bye! <laughs> It's 6.15am um, and I've decided to stop for some sleep because I'm getting too tired. Um, and now, yeah, so wild camping isn't particularly allowed in the Peak District National Park. Um, so, I mean, I'm not going to intending to leave any traces or anything, but it's still not allowed, I understand. So, I've, well, and, and I've stopped slightly earlier than I intended, um, perhaps. So, I've gone off the path a bit and down into this, 
well, peat stream bed. And uh, you see, stream, stream, stream. Oh, tent. Yes. Bango Helium Superlight 200. Shall we go and uh, have a look inside? The good thing about being down in this stream bed is that actually it's overlooked by almost nowhere and uh, a warden would have to really go out of their way to come and find this or use a heat, a thermal heat seeking thing which is just not going to happen. So, this is inside. I haven't really brought all that much with me but we have a uh, Thermarest Neoair and a Mountain Equipment 0550 so it should be nice and warm. I mean for those of you trying to work out what the temperature is like right here, this is right outside my door. Um, I think you can see the water over there is not water but ice. So it's a bit chilly. Um, I don't think it's that bad actually. Um, I think it's about kind of zero degrees out of the sun, possibly minus one, but not really that bad. And, and then in the sun, I reckon it's easily plus something or other. Um, there's no wind here, so it doesn't matter a factor. Anyway, I'm going to get some sleep. What happens when I wake up will be what happens when I wake up. Another story. Bye. I'm uh, back in Torside Clough once again. Um, yes, yeah, so I guess how long I slept for. I slept from 6 a.m. till 10. No, yeah, 6 a.m. till 4 p.m., which makes me 10 hours of sleep, which is incredible. Um, yeah, so now the plan's to walk up Black Hill, which. Um, you should be able to see in the background now. In fact, maybe more like that. Um, walk up there and then walk all the way back down to Glossop. Um, I reckon from where I camped, that's altogether about 20 kilometers, which considering I did about 17 yesterday, it will be interesting. But um, some of the last ones on this, this, this route should be, should be flat on the way back. Um, and yeah, I'm planning to walk up one path to the uh, eastern side of Croden and then walk back down the Pennine Way on the western side. Um, what else is there to mention really? Uh, some reflections on last night. Uh, the yellow brick road was very fast, Dawn was awesome, uh, I was quite tired, like, because I'd been up for a whole day beforehand, so, whilst I was getting a little bit physically tired, like, actual kind of sleepiness was quite problematic, uh, but yeah, I reckon I should be, I don't know, I'm hoping I should have done this um, by, I don't know, midnight or slightly afterwards, so uh, we'll see how it goes. Bye! It's uh, 25 to 8 and I'm almost on Hay Edge. Look at the nice sky over there. I think any kind of um, any kind of estimate of getting about for 12 is silly but um, yeah, let's see what I can do. Um, it's quite annoying that it's light because the motivation to uh, move if you sit down is uh, lesser. You know, it's quite warm and there's an average view. Uh, so, yeah, uh, and also I'm trying to search for water because I need to pick some up. So, that would be good. Anyway, speak to you in a bit.
this is probably going to be my last uh, update before it gets dark, but as you can see, the sun's setting behind me. Um, even if the camera won't really focus. Um, and yeah, uh, I still have to get to Black Hill, which is one of the lumps ahead of me. And over here, you can see Ho Moss, which is uh, the broadcast tower um, I may have shown you the flashing lights of yesterday so yeah it's uh, time to be moving there's Hope Moss and uh, you won't be able to see it really but this is the summit of uh, Black Hill and I can just see some uh, of the lights of kind of Sheffield and uh, places down there. So yeah, woo! I made it to the summit of Black Hill, and now <laughs> that was really not fun. Um, and now heading back down the Pennine Way to Crowden, uh, which hopefully, hopefully, will be less muddy, and hopefully, will be a, yeah, maybe it's just wishful thinking. Um, and then back down the uh, Longdendale Trail to Glossop. Whoop whoop! Bye. Who am I kidding? That wasn't the summit. This is the summit. That must just have been a, a warning cairn because uh, the past half a kilometre have been horrible swamp. Um, whilst I was desperately trying to find a, well, mildly confused and wondering where the Pennine Way was. But the Pennine Way is not clear. Look, flagstones. The yellow brick road is back. And uh, hopefully it'll get me off this horrible bit of moor. Yay. Bye. Well, I've made it back to uh, Crowden. Um, maps. Woo. Um, and I'm a bit exhausted. Just worked out I appear to have done um, about 15 miles, 26 kilometres so far. Um, which is quite fun. Um, and I need to press back the, uh, the final, final 6 or 7 kilometres to back to Old Glossop. Maybe six or seven is a bit optimistic. I reckon it's probably a bit further, but it's six or seven. Um, yeah, I'm quite tired physically rather than psychologically. But anyway, I have a Red Bull shot, and I think now's the time for it. better than expected. Um, so, yeah, catch up with me later. Bye. So, um, I've pretty much made it back to Glossop. Um, on the outskirts on the Woodhead Road now. Um, yeah, not very exciting really. Well, yeah, the last section over back from Black Hill was quite difficult um, I wasn't quite looking for there was some quite exposed bits and not being able to see where the well just being aware just finding out that kind of on your left hand side it had gone from being 25 meters of kind of a bit of a bank to kind of I don't know 25 meters vertical drop was unpleasant considering that you know I'd been falling over a little bit more than usual due to it being dark and having to uh, use a torch so that bit was a bit exciting and then since then it's just been a tiring slog back um, on the outskirts of Glossop now as I say head torch is going to go off there's no need for it street lights don't know how well you can see and taxis driving past like there's no tomorrow.
Yeah, it seems that taxis, the only thing taxis do is just kind of drive around in Glossop. Um, I guess they've got passengers, that might, might make more sense. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, how's it been? Tiring, I don't know. Ask me tomorrow. Um, is there anything else worth mentioning? Yeah, basically, me. Go oh, this is quite cool. I've got a suspended kind of head that's uh, disembodied. Partly due to me wearing completely black. Yeah, well, I've been... Um, <laughs> Tim from Red Dwarf. Previously called Holly. Um, yeah, I've been walking down the road with my uh, headlight, headlight. My... Like this. Woo! I am now talking, this is how it was uh, when I was on the move. Anyway, that's kind of annoying <laughs> and quite weird actually. Um, but anyway, I will go now because I'd quite like to get home and go to sleep because it's um, about, I don't know, 3.15 and I've been walk, well I woke up at 4pm um, and so I've going to be a, well I know I'll, basically I'll have been walking for about 11 hours um, well apart from some extended rest stops so I'd quite like to uh, have a nap and it might almost put my sleeping clock back into normal shape which would be quite nice anyway bye